This is a scooter that has been in the works for a very long time. It's Aether's second product in the lineup. This is the Rista and it's their scooter aimed at the more practical family buyer. The Rista, well, there's so much to talk about it. Let's start with the way it looks. Simpler but also bigger looking than the Aether 450. Larger sections, nice sleek headlamp at the front. Over at the side, you've got a big panel out here. The way it tapers down is sort of similar to the 450. That is a bit of a hint in the 450's design language. You've also got this little, little strip of colour like you see on the 450. All little hints to the Aether design language. At the back again, a very clean, long tail section. This is the identifiable point of this scooter on the street. You're really going to notice it's a Rista when you see it from the back. The scooter also has practicality as one of the most important points here. You've already seen online, Aether says that this is the longest seat on any scooter in the country. And yeah, it really is quite big. Then you have the boot space. Now, <laughs> you can see how long that is. This boot is 34 litres large, which makes it equal to the Ola S1 Air. Pretty much the biggest of most scooters. Only the River Indy has a bigger boot than this. And you've got this small little cubby out here, which Aether says you can put small things, including that little cleaning cloth that most people tend to carry. However, Aether says that this scooter actually has the most storage space of anything in the country. And that's because they will sell you an accessory, what they call the frunk. It's basically a, a expandable storage space out here which gives you 22 litres and they say combined that's 54 litres which makes this the best storage space on any scooter. Now, spaciousness. I am 6'1", lots of room, lots of room for a pillion, lots of room for someone who may be even carrying a backpack. If you're pushed all the way to the end, you've got that nice support at the back. This is standard on the top model, it's an optional accessory on the base S model. One of my biggest issues with the Aether 450 was the packaging. Tall riders, the handlebar would sort of foul with your knees. Things are better here, but I still do foul the handlebar with my knee on a full lock turn. There are some scooters that are better than this, but this is an improvement over the 450. And yeah, the floorboard is really big, lots of space for your feet. Right, now there are two variants here, but before we go into that, let's talk about what's happening underneath the scooter. It's quite interesting. Aether says that their 450 platform was so good, they didn't really need to change very much. So the main chassis is effectively the same as the 450. But what's changed is the rear subframe. It's an aluminium monocoque on the 450. Out here, it's a new tubular steel unit. It's longer, it's wider and it's lower, which means the rear seat is lower and that gives you all that space. You've got 12 inch wheels at both ends. Now, because the main platform is the same as the 450, it means you get the same sort of motor setup. So the motor is mounted on the chassis somewhere in there. It is the same motor as the 450 and I think the performance setup is the same as you'd get in the 450S, which is a little lower than the 450X. Claim performance with top speed is about 80 kilometers now, which is on par with the TVS iQBS. Not going to be the quickest thing out there, but it should be quick enough. Then we have braking. You've got a disc brake in the front and a drum at the rear. This is the first time an Aether has a drum. Now, the company has come up with some really clever safety related features over the years. Uh, they've done auto hold, they've done that tip over uh, uh, safety feature where if you drop the scooter and you, you know, pick it up, if you accidentally twist the accelerator, you see these videos on YouTube of the scooters flying out, this will recognize that it's been dropped, it will cut the throttle. Those features continue here, but now you get what they call skid control. Effectively, there's a wheel speed sensor on the front, and Aether's motor is smart enough to know how fast the rear wheel is moving. With all that data combined, the motor can then reduce the rear wheel speed if it detects that the rear wheel is slipping. Simply put, this is traction control. It's the first electric scooter in India to have that feature. Nice safety feature, not particularly relevant, but these EVs have a lot of torque, low, low grip situations, they can spin up. So that is nice to have. All right, now let's get to the variants. Like with the 450, there are essentially two variants. The base variant gets the LCD sort of screen from the 450S and it gets a smaller 2.9 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is the same that you will get in the Aether 450S as well. Then you have the Rista Z version, which gives you some more colors. You get some more safety features, the traction control. Uh, you get a TFT screen from the 450X and that variant comes with two options of battery pack, 2.9 kilowatts or 3.7. Again, the same battery packs that you'll get on the 450X. We'll put the claim range numbers down there, but Aether's range numbers are really quite reliable and generally what they say is what you will get. Now, this is the top 450Z, so you have the TFT display. 
it is a similar TFT uh, in terms of the actual unit compared to the 450. The layout is completely different. Now, we are told that these are pre-production scooters, so hopefully all this finishing around here, switch gear should be better on the final production units. But effectively, you have the similar switch gear that you've seen on the 450, the latest 450. It also has riding modes, but they've kept it simple here. It's smart eco mode or zip mode for full performance. They are trying to simplify the riding experience and they say this is a really easy scooter to ride targeted at multiple members of the family and they say that this is the best balanced scooter at low speeds. All claims that we'll put to the test when we actually ride it. Now, Aether is always trying to improve the customer experience and they say that they've been working on this smart helmet for many years now. It's finally out, it's called the Halo. This is the Halo, that's the Halo bit. Full face, open face. Although we are told that these are still pre-production prototypes and not ready yet. Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening in here. Sound is by Harman Kardon. It has integrated speakers. Aether says they've worked on the padding for it to be smooth and soft and comfortable. This is an XL, so really loose. But the interesting thing is that the moment you put the helmet on, it recognizes that you've worn it and it turns the system on automatically. You don't have to press any buttons, you don't have to connect it to your phone, and that's a very convenient hands-free system, especially if you're used to using a Bluetooth communicator and you have to keep turning it on and off. Now, Another interesting thing is that it's wireless charging. There's a wireless charger built in there. You will get a magnetic charger, clip it on like charging a smartwatch and it will charge the helmet. Even more interesting is that in the Rizstar's boot, they have integrated a charger. So if you put this in the boot, it will automatically go on charge. Very nice stuff happening here. Uh, this is the open face helmet. It doesn't have the big module on the back, but they've got this little module here. Similar features, but uh, here there's a couple of interesting things going on. So if you've got a rider and a pillion, they can communicate with each other, talk to each other. There's noise cancelling happening on both these systems, so you'll get a clear voice. Aether says you can even share music, so you and your pillion can listen to the same music and enjoy it together while you're riding. Again, very interesting stuff. Now, how much do these cost? We are told that the price for this will be 5,000 rupees, and this will be 13,000 rupees. There is a lot of nice tech in here, but these are pretty basic helmets. Quality on this one doesn't look so good. Hopefully the production models are better, but that is a lot of money for helmets that look and feel like this. So convenience seems to be fantastic. Features seem to be fantastic. But if you want a really protective helmet, you could get something better for that kind of money. Finally, let's talk about the pricing. Introductory pricing, as always, everyone launches a product and then says introductory pricing. But it is exciting because this thing starts at 1.1 lakh rupees X showroom and the top version is 1.45, which is bang on par with the IQ best. And going by what's on paper, there is a lot more on offer here. So this should be really interesting. Bookings are open right now. Deliveries will commence in July. We should be riding the scooter about next month. So look out for our review.